Buy and verse rent in your next Plainview property. That's the topic of my next video. Buy and verse renting in Plainview, New York. That's the topic of this video. Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Schreier, and I'm a licensed sales associate with Century 21 American Homes right here in Syosset, Long Island. I'm going to share with you a five point checklist, five points to help you make that decision, because at the end of the day, the decision is yours, governed by the banks, unfortunately, unless you have a lot of cash in your pocket. And then that still can be a particular problem. So renting, one of the pros of renting is mobility. If you rent a property and you look for one that has a month to month lease, you can pack up and move at any time. It's quick and it's not an issue. You can do that until you find a place where you'd like to live long term, but that's totally up to you. Number two, the landlord pays all the maintenance. Now, isn't that great? Because as a homeowner for 20 something years, I can tell you it can become an expensive proposition. Call up the landlord, say my bathroom toilet broke or it's not working or the sink's leaking. They have to come and usually in a timely fashion and fix those problems. Number three, doesn't require expensive closing costs. That's right. When you buy a property, you have to have a significant amount to put down, although there are some first time home buyer, buyer programs that don't require as much, but usually require more than what you need up front for rent. Uh, number four, no fluctuations in your monthly expenses. What do I mean by that? If you're locked in at a rent, if you're doing month to month, it can go up and down. But if you lock in at a year's lease, that's what it is for that year. If you're in rent control, like some of the cities have, the larger, the larger apartment complexes, and that's even governed a little more. And the next one allows you to test drive, like I mentioned before, a lot of different properties in different towns or in the same town in different locations. So you get to test the waters, which I always recommend. You should never jump in and buy something without knowing, particularly those people who are relocating from other states for jobs or this or that. You don't want to just go and buy a property and then you're not happy and now you're locked in and you got to go through the sales process and everything like that. The five cons of renting. You don't build any equity. All that money you're paying goes to the landlord to help him pay or her pay off her house. And then you have nothing at the end of the day other than the flexibility. So there is a price you pay for that flexibility. We interrupt my video for a special housekeeping announcement. If you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by. Please remember to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Now back to our video. Number two. You're limited in what you can do to customize it. You might be able to do some painting, but everything is governed by the landlord. So that's it. for somebody who likes to customize a house. Uh, maybe, you know, your family's growing and you want an art and bedroom. That is not going to be done that easily because you don't own the property. Next, rent could go up over time. Yes, over time. Like I mentioned before, month to month lease. The rents can increase every month or yearly if you have a yearly lease. So you might not know what's coming next. You thought it was controlled and it is to some point, but the landlord can decide on a non-rent controlled property that he or she wants to raise the rent significantly. And that's between you and them. The next thing, you are not a homeowner. If that's something that doesn't bother you, then it's definitely not a con, but you don't own the property. You don't have the sense of home ownership uh, it's hard to explain what that feels like, but once you end up buying a property, you'll definitely understand what that means. Uh, the landlord might decide to stop selling or he might decide to stop renting. And you're totally at his mercy, I should say. Once the lease is expired, he could decide to move. It would be nice if he gave you some notice, but that's a problem. You could have loved this house and decide or this apartment you want to stay there. And all of a sudden they decide they're no longer renting that property. And now I'm going to share with you five pros of buying equity. Most real estate that you purchase builds equity over time. I said most. It doesn't happen all the time. And you have to make sure that you know the market you're buying in and you know the climate of the, uh, the current climate. When you buy, if you buy very overpriced, like people did in 08, 07, 08, when we had the real estate bubble that burst, then that was a time when a lot of people lost a lot of equity in their house. Definitely wasn't a good time in the real estate world. 
But after that, people, particularly investors, were able to buy houses at very low property uh, property values. And then they were able to um, gain over time because the real estate market did rebound a lot of equity. If you are savvy enough and you do your homework, you might be able to find something a little below the market value. So you have instant equity in the house when you buy. The next thing is your home value definitely can increase or may increase over time. Again, some home values can go down. So understand that. Just like if you play the stock market, if you put money in the market, it's not guaranteed to go up, but it's a risk reward situation. One other thing to understand is you are doing what we call OPM, other people's money. So if you invest in, and we're getting a little into investing now, but if you put 20% um, down on a house, then you are actually just putting 20% down on that property and you're getting all the equity building up. Let's say it's a $500,000 house minus the 20%. You're getting the equity on the $500,000 price. So you're using other people's money, in this case, the bank, to build the equity in your house in a way that you might not have ever been able to do. So that's a big plus. But again, it's a risk reward situation. There is definitely tax benefits to real estate and they do change. So you got to check with your financial uh, advisor for that. And the next thing is a sense of freedom to customize your house the way you want it. You want to build up, you want to build out as long as you meet the town codes and you get the proper permits, then you're allowed to do that. That's something you cannot do when you rent. So you can buy a small house in a certain area and then check moving, you know, uh, be proactive and make sure when you buy that house, if you have a goal of putting a roof or what I say, we call a top on it, a second story that you're allowed to do that. And then in 10, 15 years, when you decide or your family starts growing, you can then put a top on that property and stay in the same neighborhood, keep the same schools, and it makes everybody in the family happy. So those are the five pros that I gave. I hope I gave five the five cons of buying. Yes, for every pro, we do have a con. Again, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to basically think about all the pros and cons and decide which way you want to go. It's not a, you know, you don't have to do it and say, this is, I'm going to be a renter for the rest of my life. Naturally, you can change uh, when your situation changes. So let's get into those cons. Number one, closing costs. Yeah, closing costs can be very expensive. The goal that I tell all my clients is to try to get at least 20% down. Why 20%? And that that's because you want to avoid something called PMI, private mortgage insurance. Private mortgage insurance is an expense you really don't need if you have enough money to cover the 20% down. Once it's less than 20%, the bank says, hmm, I'm taking a little more of a risk than they would like to take. And they want you to get separate insurance. And that's called the private mortgage insurance. So if you're able to get to that 20% down, that will save you a lot of money in the long run. If you can only get 10% down, that works. But as well, and you'll pay until you get your principal amount principal paid up to the 20%. And then the private mortgage insurance will go away. For those first time home buyers that are looking for very low down payments, there are very there are a lot of um, mortgage vehicles out there, mortgage products, I should say, that will give you, uh, you know, the three percent down and things like that as well. So you can contact me. I can set you up with a couple of mortgage professionals or you can contact your own mortgage professional to find out which program works best for you. I don't want you to get scared away because I'm saying 20 percent down. I'm just giving you financially. That is the best scenario to save yourself some money over the long run. Closing cost we mentioned. Now we're going to get into who's responsible for the maintenance. Well, guess again, it's the landlord. However, in this case, you are the landlord. So if you're the landlord, you have to pay all those costs. If you got to put a roof on, you can spend anywhere from six to ten thousand plus dollars just to replace your roof. It can become very expensive. If in fact you something breaks in the house, you have to pay for it. Now you could put it off, but once it becomes a problem where well, you need it to live, 
like a roof, if you don't replace your roof and it's leaking, that can cause significant damage for the rest of the house and you don't want to go there. So understand, you become the landlord of your own house. You're responsible for all those bills and repairs moving forward. Uh, less flexibility would be another thing we mentioned before. You had more flexibility as a rent and now you have less. Some houses sell very quickly, but the process can still take three months. Even if you get a buyer uh, within the first open house, you know, seven to 12 days and accepted offer, you still have to go through the process. And yes, there are many hiccups that can go along with it that can slow it down. Uh, another thing you need to know about is your home value may decrease. And I mentioned the bubble before, the real estate bubble of 07, 08. If the home value in of your property goes down, that could be a problem, particularly if you bought the property for top dollar, right at what it appraised for. There's really no equity in the house. All of a sudden, the market takes a dive and you took out the maximum mortgage you can take. Now, if you try to sell your house, it's actually worth less than what you owe on your mortgage. And that's what we call you're in the red. That's not a good place to be. If you stay in the house longer, hopefully the market will correct itself, and it usually does in most areas, not all the time. You have to make sure, again, that you do your due diligence, you do your homework, and find out an area that you think is going to be moving up um, in a positive fashion for home values. And another thing, the tax laws, like I mentioned earlier, the tax laws could hamper the tax benefits of your property. So... If, in fact, you had great tax laws, you can write everything off before and all of a sudden things change, um, you need to know that and you could speak to your accountant or your attorney about those particular things. Okay, now I gave you five pros and cons of both buying and renting, and I hope you have a better understanding of what you want to do and when you should do it. But understand, even if you went through this and you utilize it as a checklist and you decided that you wanted to go out and be a renter or a buyer, there's one very important topic that I didn't cover. And I'm going to cover it now, and that's your credit. If you have very poor credit, and I'm going to include a link to another video I made uh, from credit advisors about improving your credit and what is a good credit score. If you don't have credit at all, and a lot of first-time home buyers might not have ever have a, had a credit card and might not have ever paid for anything on credit, that could be problematic for both buying and renting. Now, if you're looking to rent in somebody's private house, that probably isn't going to be as much of an issue, particularly if maybe you have a relationship with the homeowner, you can talk to them tell them you have a job and things of that nature. But if you deal with any large uh, apartment complexes that have management comp uh, management uh, companies running and the renting process, it's going to be or could be very problematic because you have no credit or your credit score is very bad. Same thing goes for getting a mortgage. If you have a poor credit score, you're going to be paying much higher rates for um, the interest, and that's not a good thing. So what you should do before you even start thinking, oh, you know, I want to move, think about it two years back. If you check your credit, and you should be checking your credit at least once a year by all three of the services that you can do free credit checks online. Uh, they don't cost anything, and they're what we call soft checks. They don't affect your credit. Make sure you check your credit, and you want to get it as high as possible. The reason why I said two years back is because it can take at least 18 months if you have some glitches or problems in your credit to try to improve those scores. And definitely get the help of a professional because you might think you're improving it by just maybe closing an account or two, but there's a lot of tricks to it. It's not as easy as you think. And I'll give you one scenario. I was listening to a radio broadcast of a financial expert. I'm not going to mention uh, the name of the person, but a young lady called in and said to them, I want to rent an apartment, but I don't, I don't have any credit cards. I don't like credit. I don't want to get in the red with my debt and everything else, like a lot of her friends were. And she was afraid that if she applied for an apartment, she was not going to be able to get uh, cleared for the apartment because she has no credit. So she was in a dilemma. So she asked the person, what should I do? And the answer was basically, you're 100% correct. If you don't have credit, you can't rent because they're going to be doing these credit checks and see zero credit, not, not even negative, but zero. I never had a credit card, never did anything. And that became problematic. And the person's answer or the financial expert's answer was this. 
I can go and try to rent an apartment and they will not allow me to rent because I have zero credit. Not terrible credit, but zero. I don't have any credit cards. I don't believe in credit cards. And I can go in and I can buy the complex. Because this is the financial expert on the radio saying they have millions and millions, not thousands and thousands, but they have millions and millions of dollars. They can buy the whole complex, but if they wanted to rent the apartment, they wouldn't allow them to do it because they don't have credit. Does it make sense? Definitely not to me, but unfortunately that's how things work in the credit world. So I hope this was helpful. First thing you need to do before you're even thinking about buying or renting is get your credit checked and make sure it is good. Again, watch that link for the video that I have about improving your credit score. And this is Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes. Thanks for watching.